I'm from Austria. Uh, to start this whole uh, traveling tales, that's a photo I took last year close to my home. I photoshopped my mom out of it, <laughs> very bad of me, but uh, it kind of looks like that. So it's like the Shire, you know, we have the story of uh, like Lord of the Rings. I, I moved from Austria to the US. Let me share an old Austrian wisdom with you, which is uh, when you look at this photo, the world is not flat. What's interesting is we are surrounded by a world. I mean, these mountains make it very obvious, but even on a, on a level here, the environment that we're in, the objects that we interact with, we live in a three-dimensional world. And as humans, we have gotten really, really good at dealing with that world. If you look at uh, man-made objects around us, say all of these uh, devices you see here, you see this like, rich variety, not only how our bodies have evolved to deal with the world, but also how, we, how we've created all these amazing tools of, uh, that allow us to, to change uh, the environment around us, to interact with it, and to communicate with each other. Now let's compare that uh, to computers. I mean, here's like a say, state of the art uh, modern touchscreen computer. I have it as well and I really love it. But just compare that to the picture on the left, which is this like amazing, rich world of materials, of using our hands, of experiencing the world with that, and then see how like reduced our modern multi touch or gestural experience is compared to that. I think Mark McCullough puts this really nicely when he says, hands are underrated, eyes are in charge, minds get all the study, and heads do all the talking. And hands type letters, they push mice around, they grip steering wheels, so they're not idle, they're just underemployed, we're underutilizing them. And I think that is a big shame. When I was a student in Austria, in my undergrad, I was lucky enough, I did a, an internship at a museum over a summer, and I saw this project, and it really spoke to me. That was uh, 10 years ago. It was done at the MIT Media Lab back then uh, by the Tangible Media Group. And, and this, just to, to explain really quick, uh, what you see here is it's a landscape design tool, so a computer-aided design tool, where landscape architects can create a digital model, but not by pushing a mouse around, but by actually using a material, creating that model with their hands, the computer will automatically scan that model and convert it into a digital format and run a simulation on it. So this idea, which, which I find really powerful, that now we have this whole expressivity of our hands, and we can also uh, have the, the power of computation connected to that material. Back then, when I saw this, it, it blew my mind, and I knew that I wanted to join this group, so Fast forward four years, I finally managed to, to actually uh, uh, come to the Media Lab and uh, start my graduate studies there. And I was looking at what, what can I add to that. I mean, I, I had a lot of programming and design experience, but not really any hardware. And so I started looking at how can we make a tool that is both uh, digital and physical that the computer can program to create shapes. So that was the starting point. We looked at, this is a very common approach of trying to do that. So you probably know these pin screen toys that you can buy in novelty stores. You push your hand in and then the shape comes out on the other end. So we're like, what if we make a computerized version of that? Because people have been doing that for manufacturing in the past. In the beginning of my master's, I started making one of these tables. Uh, it has 120 of these pins that can move up and down. And, uh, my wonderful colleagues, uh, Matt, Tony, and David, wrote an application on top of it, which kind of shows, I mean, it's a very low resolution version, but it kind of shows what we were trying to get at. This idea of, can we have something that is like digital clay? It's as intuitive as clay. We can, we can mold it with our hands, we can touch it and deform it, but we also have computational uh, functionality embedded in the material, in this, in this device, so we can do things like extrude shapes, translate them, scale them. So we have, we have parametric design and physical uh, design, uh, both in the same tool. And to us, once we started having this platform, we saw that to us this was really uh, something powerful, and uh, we started making more and more of these uh, shape displays over the last couple of years. That's why we call them shape displays, because they're kind of like a, a touch screen, only they can create shapes. Uh, and let me show you a few examples of what we've been doing. Here is one where we were thinking, how can we change menus on a computer? You know, right now, if you have your touchscreen phone, you kind of like try and hit buttons or, or scroll bars, and it's kind of tedious. 
we were like, what if, what if uh, your phone screen could change its shape and actually guide you, physically guide you, so you can feel, can I rotate an element or can I select one? So you have like these menus that you can feel. Here, this is a similar kind of modeling tool, this idea of like, we start to extrude a shape and then maybe can go in and, and uh, change it uh, using our hands. Um, kind of simple models here. I'm not a very good 3D modeler, but <laughs> here like a car model where when we have a, a menu to change the, the color of that model, it like pops up or, or uh, there's like a, say physical bar chart. So trying to understand the information better by actually having it located in the real world, being able to touch it. This one here I like in particular because it's showing mathematical surface functions. So you have like the X, Y, and then the C dimensions. And when you render them physically, a lot of things start to make sense. Like you can play with, with you know, dropping a ball on top and seeing where it rolls and understanding differential equations through that. We also started playing a lot with this idea of putting physical objects on top of um, the table because we realized the shapes can move objects. So here's a scenario where, say, my phone's on the table, but I'm so you know immersed in my book that I don't notice it ringing. So now it like starts to move it over and says, "Come on, you gotta like take this call." Then we started this whole idea of communication that started with the phone. We we realized we could on, not only use it to make computers more intuitive, but to connect people with each other over a distance. So here, this is an application where we connected the output on the table to a depth sensing camera. Skype and all these um, tools that we have right now to connect with each other are kind of inadequate to really connect with each other. So we felt this, this kind of physical output, like a, a big idea was like, how could I see, play Legos with my nephews and nieces in Austria while I'm in the US or read to them from a book? And of course, it's very limited in what it can do right now, but that's kind of what, what inspired us. Here's another example of that where we thought maybe you can be like a remote expert that helps a local person. So you like kind of hold up their work piece and then you start explaining to them and say, so you gotta like solder over here, something like that. So to us, this whole, this whole project, uh, and, and I'm only, uh, you know, part of a team that has been working on that, so I don't want to take the credit, especially my, my very close collaborator, Sean, has been a, a big part of this, and our advisor, Hiroshi Ishii. But we really think that this might not be the future of human-computer interaction, but we definitely think, or we hope, that it's going to go in that direction of putting hands back into the center, into the focus of dealing with information, dealing with our environment, and with each other. Thank you.